YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, October 28th, 2011. Now last week I talked about taking at least a one hour down payment when you work on old home light chainsaws. Well, I forgot to mention that that down payment, if the chainsaw ends up working, that I do apply it toward the repair. So they're not losing totally a one hour repair down payment. Take that money and apply it to the final bill. So make sure to explain that to your customers if that's how you deal with it as well. Now I had an email from a YouTuber called The More Medic One. Actually his YouTube username is this. And I thought he had a really good explanation of how to deal with taking a one hour down payment when you do repairs like that. So what I'm going to do now is show you just a little clip from his video response. And then I'm going to put the link to his video underneath this video here. And here it is. Your down payments of uh, one hour labor, we do it here at our shop. I just want to let you know that that is the way to do it. Uh, some shops don't. And guess what? They're the ones that are going out of business. That uh, What you're doing is, uh, is correct. And I hope your other viewers that uh, don't understand that taking deposits, uh, that is the way to do it. But uh... So I do recommend that you guys check out his video, especially if you're a small engine mechanic with your own shop. Now some people have asked me how fast does your homemade chainsaw bike go? Well, it'll go approximately 35 miles an hour. That's when the road is really dry because if it's a bit wet the spindle can tend to spin right off the tire. I don't use it much but I just keep it in my garage so it stays in the condition that it's in. Now in this question people have asked me what does it mean if the spark plug is dry or wet when I remove it from my small engine? People often ask me this because sometimes their piece of equipment will not start they take the plug out, they're not sure what the condition of the engine is because the plug is either dry or wet. What does it mean? Well, if your engine will not start and the plug is dry like this, it could be that there's no fuel going to the engine. If the spark plug was really wet and you could see fuel on it and so forth, then that would mean that the engine could be flooded or it could be that the spark is weak. It could be that the spark plug needs to be replaced. But in either case, just remember if the spark plug is dry, it's a fuel issue. If the spark plug is wet, it could be flooded or it could be a spark issue. If your spark plug's dry, sometimes you spray a bit of quick start or penetrating oil in the cylinder or gas in there, put the spark plug back on, and if it starts, then you know absolutely for sure that there's no fuel going to it. And if the spark plug's wet all the time and you know the engine is not flooded, it could be that the ignition module or a coil here needs to be replaced. If it's an older engine, you may have to sand the points or replace them along with the condenser. But always check the spark on your spark plug when you're having problems with your engine. Just stick it in the spark plug boot and then just ground it to the engine. Make sure the switch is on. Now hold the spark plug by the boot and pull over your engine and see how the spark is. Now that chainsaw has good spark. It does run properly. That's why the spark plug is dry when I remove it. But what I just showed you is what I usually do when I have a problem with some small engines. Now in a previous video I had mentioned that if the crank seals on your chainsaw are worn out it could make it hard to start and to adjust the carburetor. A YouTuber emailed me and asked me if that same principle applies to a snowblower engine. Well the answer to that is no. Now the reason for that is because when it comes to not being able to adjust the carburetor on a small engine because the crank seals are shot I'm usually talking about an engine that's a two cycle like a chainsaw or a grass trimmer. Now these chainsaws have a carburetor made by Walbro or Zama and they do have diaphragms in them. Now these carburetors do depend on impulses of air coming from the crankcase in order to make the carburetor work properly. What happens is if the crank seals are leaking a lot of that air is lost between the crank seal and the crankshaft therefore the carburetor is not getting the correct amount of air to it to make it function properly. Now when it comes to a snowblower engine it's a totally different concept. The carburetor on these engines is fed fuel through gravity. So you just fill up your gas tank and gravity will do the rest for you. The gas will work its way to the carburetor. The carburetor does not need to pump the fuel like in a chainsaw or a grass trimmer with a two-cycle engine. So if you're not able to adjust the carburetor on your four-cycle engine on your snowblower, it's not because of the crank seals. If the crank seals are blown on your snowblower engine, it's going to be leaking oil between the crankshaft and the seal. A lot of the time if you cannot adjust the carburetor on your snowblower it's because the carburetor is dirty. You could also have a bad valve in your engine that could cause that problem as well. And a host of other things could be causing your carburetor hard to adjust on your snowblower. But most snowblowers now do not have a carburetor that is adjustable. 
They're usually all non-adjustable carburetors. My next question is regarding carburetor kits for two cycle engines. A lot of people rebuild the carburetor in their chainsaw or grass trimmer and they're always asking me how come I've got all these extra diaphragms and little parts left over. The reason there are extra parts is because the kit in itself is made to accommodate a number of different models of carburetor. To give you an example, I have a Walbro K10 watt kit, which is a very popular carburetor kit. And if you look inside the carb kit here, you can see all these diaphragms, all the Welsh plugs and all that. Now when you rebuild your carburetor, just basically take it all apart, take all the parts out, and then match them up to what's in the carb kit. You're going to find that you may have little diaphragms that are left over, or little gaskets like this here, but that's not a big deal. Also, you do not need to replace the Welsh plugs every time you rebuild your carburetor. I only replace the Welsh plugs in the carburetor if I have constant trouble even after rebuilding the carb. If you do replace the Welsh plugs, just be very careful when you remove them that you don't cause more damage to the carburetor. So again, don't worry if you have extra diaphragms or little parts left over from the kit after your rebuild. Just make sure that you match up all the parts from your carburetor to the ones in the new carb kit. Before I end off today, I want to thank all the YouTubers who send me emails, especially emails of thanks. I get a lot of people send me emails regarding a repair they did by watching my videos. I really appreciate that. Just keep sending me your emails like that because it does encourage me to continue doing what I'm doing, especially when I know it's helping out people. So your emails don't always have to be about a question. Even if you want to tell me how you did a repair, I appreciate that as well. So this will pretty well wrap it up for this week's Q&A. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.